Larbert High School, Mr. Grimmer. Do you fancy saying a few words at the start of the next video? It's Mr. Grimmer from Larbert High School here. Not now, Mr. G. It's time for maths. Hit it, Grace. It's time for maths with Mr. Thomas. Here we are, we are still on the Vectors chapter and we're moving on to lesson four. We're now looking at position vectors. Boom, 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 boom. So, what is a position vector? Well, it is a vector that goes from the origin to any point on a coordinate diagram. You can see that here, we have our x axis and our y axis. We have a couple of points. We've got this point up here, A, at the point three, Five, and we've got point B here at 7, 2. The position vector of each is how we go from the origin ta -da, to that point. So you can see to go from the origin up to point A, well, it's drawn in there. We have called that vector A. Remember when we write a vector, it's lowercase and it's underlined. The vector though for A, because this is the point 3, 5, the way we write it as a vector is we write three and five, but instead of writing it horizontally, we write it vertically with the x value being at the top and the y value being below that. So we've got a, the vector a is three, five. Those are the components of a. And for b, it has the coordinates seven, two. We've come along seven and then up two. So the vector to go from the origin up to point b, well, this vector has been drawn in and we have called that vector b. So again, it's a lowercase letter underlined. But the way we write that, with the way we write the vector, we don't write seven, two with the brackets when it's written horizontally. We write it vertically. We do, we write it vertically with the X component being at the top and the Y component being below that. So we've got seven, two for the vector B. Yeah. Excuse me, why are we doing this? Good question. The reason we are doing this is because a lot of the time we are not interested in just going from the origin up to a certain point or from the origin up to another point. What we want is we want the vector between two points. So we want, say, the vector between A and B. And the way we do that is we use our position vectors. Remember, the position vector goes from the origin up to point A or the origin up to point B. But to find out the vector that joins A to B, what we can do is we can use these position vectors. And the way we use the position vectors is, well, really what you'd have to do to go from A to B, because we don't know the shortcut between them, we don't know this vector, what we can do is we can say that is the same as negative of A, and then plus B. So to go from A to B, we can really say that that is negative A plus B. But the quick way of doing that, rather than doing negative A plus B, is we just do vector B, take away vector A. Which means in this case, if we want to work out this vector between them, well, you would do B, take away A. So vector B, remember that was seven, two, that was the point seven, two, so as a vector, it was seven, two, written in a column just like that. And vector A, well, because that is the point three, five, we would write that as a vector. 3, 5. So what we do is we do the second, take away the first. So you do the 7, take away 3, and you do 2, take away 5. Which means then that vector AB works out to be 4, negative 3. Also, if you do that, what you'll see is, well, that actually works. If you're going from point A to point B, you can see if it's 4, 3, well, the 4 means you're going along to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4 boxes, and the negative 3 means you're going down 3, so you're going down 1, 2, 3. So if you go along 4, down 3, you get to that point B. So that is how you can work out the vector that joins two points. You use the position vectors. Just remember this part here. If you work out A, B, it's B take away A. It's always the second minus the first. So if you wanted to work out M, N, in order to work that out, what would you do? I would be the second M, no. It would be the second, so N. Good. Take away. Yes. M. Well done. You got it right, Charles, well done. Uh, it would be N take away M. So it's always the second take away the first. Let's try some examples with M then. 
Example one for each of the coordinates A, three, negative two, B, negative five, zero, and C, 11, four. Find the following vectors. So we've got to find AB, AC, and two, BC. So let's start at the very beginning. To work out AB, brilliant, it's always the second vector minus the first. So AB is gonna be B, take away A. Which means then, if we write down these points as a vector, so B, the position vector of point B, well, it's negative 5, 0, so all we do is we write it down as a vector with the x coordinate and the y coordinate. So when it's the vector, it's the x component and the y component. Negative 5, 0. We're taking away A. A is the point 3, negative 2, so we will take away 3, negative 2. If we then work that out, what would you have? Prionto. Good. Negative 5 take away 3 gives you negative 8. And Adam, 0 take away negative 2. It is 2. Well done. Yeah. Let's try another one. So AC, how do we go about working out AC, Sophia? Good. It is the second take away the first. Remember, AB is B take away A. So AC will be C take away A. Which means then, what will we have? Safia. Good, C is gonna be 11, four, very well done. And we would take away A, which would be, good, it's a three, negative two, very well done. From there, Lee. Good, 11 take away three gives you eight, good. So that's gonna be your X component. And if we do the four take away negative two, what would you get for that, Aoife? Excellent, you would get six, good, which means the components of vector AC would be 8, 6. Woo! Let's try another one. This time we've got 2BC. Ba, 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 ba. There is a 2 in front of it. But what that really means is it's just 2 times the vector BC. So it's going to be 2 times. And how would we work out BC? Yeah, it's going to be the second minus the first. So it's going to be C take away B. Let's work out this vector first of all, C take away B. So we've got two times by, and how do we do C take away B? What would you do for that, Alan? Brilliant, well done, it's gonna be C, which is 11, four. Take away B, and B would be negative five, zero. So, working that out then, we've still got two times by, and if we work out this in the brackets, we've got 11, four, take away negative five, zero. So 11, take away negative five, Scott. Good, 11, take away negative five would be 16. And four, take away zero, Sufyan. It is good, it's just four, good. Because we've got the two times by, the 16, four, how do we work that out? Maria, you're a genius. All you do is you multiply both the 16 and the four by two. So two times 16 gives you 32, and two times four gives you eight. Woo! So that is the vectors that join those points. Example two, given E is the point six, negative one, F is eight, two, G is negative three, five, and H is one, eleven. Part A, find the vectors EF and GH. And part B, what is the connection between the lines EF and GH? Ooh, let's find out. So for part A, we want to find the vectors EF so to work out EF, how do we do it? What could we do in here, Millie? Brilliant, work out EF, just remember this box. Hello, look at me, remember me. AB is B minus I is the second minus the first. Which means then, Millie, take over to work out EF. Good, you would do F, take away E. Which means then, if we're looking for the position vector of F, because F is the point 8, 2, its position vector will be, good, it'll just be 8, Two, written as a column. E has the point six, negative one, so again, we're gonna write that just as a column with the X component and the Y component. We're working out the eight, two, take away the six, negative one, one vector minus the other. So to work that out, eight, take away six is good. And two, take away negative one, and it's to see what do you think? Well done, you're a genius. It would be three, which means then EF, would have the components two, three. Yeah. Let's do GH. So for GH, how do we do that? Millie, back to you. Brilliant, well done, you are pointing to this box. Well done, Millie. Keep pointing to the box, Millie. <laughs> and 
I moved it. Okay, for GH, we would have H takeaway G. Second takeaway, the first. So the components of H would be brilliant because this is the point 111. We would have 111 written as a column. Remember the X on the top, Y on the bottom. We are taking away G, so we are taking away negative 3, 5. If we work that out, well, one takeaway negative three, what does that give you, Chris? It does indeed, it gives you four. And if you work out 11 takeaway five, go on, Richie. Yeah, well done, that would be four, six, woo! Okay, so we've got the vectors EF and GH. Part B, what is the connection between the lines EF? and GH. So imagine those vectors, well you know a vector is just going to be a line, but if we're wanting the line between E and F and the line between G and H, what's the connection between them? Well to work that out we can look at these vectors. The 2, 3 really means we would go along 2 and then up 3. So we're going along 2, up 3, which means then that vector would be drawn in something like that. With the 4, 6, does anybody notice anything about the 4, 6 in relation to the 2, 3? Oh, you're a genius! Well done, Lindsay. Yes, the 4 is just double the 2. The 6 is just double the 3. So if you think back to your algebra, remember taking out highest common factors, if you think about doing something similar with this, well, if you divide both of them by 2, really take the 2 outside the brackets, you can say that would be the same as 2 times by... And if you just divide them by 2, you end up with 2, 3. Again, think back to your algebra, just taking out common factors. It's very similar to that. Uh, which means we've got 2 times the 2, 3. So obviously the 2, 3 once again means you're going along 2 and then you're going up 3. So that would be the vector drawn in. But really you would have 2 of them. So where that one ends, you would then again go along 2 and up 3. So you'd have it looking something like this. Really, what that means then is... Good! It means that this vector here, GH, is just twice the length of EF. For this one, you went along 2 and up 3, but for this one, you went along 2 and up 3, and then you went along another 2 and up 3. And because they share that vector, well, it means if you draw them, if you go along 2 and up 3, and then for the other one, you go along 2 and up 3, it means if you draw in the vectors there, the vectors are going to be parallel! Brilliant, and they're parallel, these two lines, because they're sharing that vector. Just this one is twice the length of it. If you put that into a fancy little sentence, you could say, <coughs> EF and GH are parallel lines, since they share a common vector. And GH is twice the length of EF. <coughs> but that would be the answer. It would indeed, well done, that is what you would have. Just remember, to work out AB, it's B takeaway A. That's the main thing to take from this lesson. If you're 100% okay with that, try some of these questions. They are in the TJ National 5 book, page 146, exercise 15.3. As usual, check your answers as you go. Make sure you're getting this right, and if you are, there's a high five for you. Yeah! Let's go!